welcome Scoopers to episode two of the Scoops vlog. Yeah, Diana today. and I are going to be hosting yes. uh, Bestie Kenzie and Alyssa last week, and now it's our turn. This yes. is my suite, and we're going to talk about PR. But and first, Diane, you brought something for us. Yes, seeing as, as it is the spookiest time of the year, I brought Kit Kats. Blessed day. And we do have ice cream. It's just softening right now. Yes. Don't don't worry. We're not completely going off heat. <laughs> Diane, would you like to tell us about PR? Yes. So according to an article written by Zoya, I'm going to try to pronounce her name here, Sadiq, Sadiq, sure. Yeah. Called the history of PR. Early examples of public relations can be traced back to ancient Greece. <laughs> yeah. When philosophers such as Plato and Aristotle wrote about how speakers could like persuade people and how they could hmm. use their speech to like very easily like persuade people. And public relations as a career doesn't really take off until like the early twenty early twentieth century when Ivy Lee began working as an advisor to John Rockefeller and helped him just improve his personal and company image when a series of coal related mining accidents happened in the early 1900s. Mm. He's also believed to be the author of the first press release, according to the Meltwater article, A History of Public Relations. Great article, has a lot of awesome information. Now, as much as I'd love to talk more about the fascinating history of PR, I cannot because we have other things we must discuss. Okay, so we have with us today Jennifer Fries. And Jennifer, could you maybe tell, um, our audience, like what you exactly do at Ellen and Federal Credit Union? Absolutely. Again, thanks for the introduction. My name is Jennifer Fries. I am our Vice President of Marketing and Business Development. We just wanted to call you and ask, like, what exactly, like, what public relations is, like, what do you do as part of marketing? And this definition of what PR is defined on Marion Webster as the business of inducing the public to have understanding for and goodwill toward a person firm or institution. Would you agree with that um, definition? Is there anything you might want to add to that? You know, that is a really good question, and I do not believe that PR can effectively be defined explicitly just by that piece of information. Um, and it's funny, you all, you've done your research and you've got some great questions started, but to me, um, you know, public relations is so much more than that simple definition, particularly as much as public relations has evolved over the, evolved over the past 25 years, taking into consideration uh, new forms of media such as digital, et cetera. But in a nutshell, to me, public relations is the strategic and intentional communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and the public or target audience. Alrighty, so it's kind of like almost, it's like connecting with your target audience and almost kind of making like what your brand is like known for? Absolutely. Okay, so that's leading on to why you think public relations and marketing is so like important for businesses. It is a critical component for any business. It, you know, it should be a part of any, whether you're small, large, even individuals. You know, some individuals, they focus on PR and marketing elements. They're part of an individual's personal brand, per se. And it's so easy to um, for folks to kind of bundle the two, public relations and marketing. They are intertwined. Um, it is... You know, there's so much collaboration and things going on where those two different elements are connected. Um, I always like to think, you know, marketing to me, a lot of times there's the goal there is to promote a specific product or service and to increase sales, to drive sales. And then when we think about PR, we are really working on preserving the integrity of, a, of the brand you know, how the community perceives our brands, how we are represented in the community through a variety of tactics. All right. All right. That's so interesting. I don't know that I ever have, like, taken the time to uh, differentiate between the two. I kind of just lump it all together in my mind. Yeah. yeah, Chloe, and a lot of people do that. I mean, they are so connected. If you think about that, if you have good PR and a great representation in the community, marketing is so much easier. So you want right. those two to be connected, and you certainly want to associate the two. But if we got really specific, a lot of times 
key metrics and goals may look a little different for each of the two. What's like an aspect of your job that you particularly enjoy? Uh, for me, I think what I enjoy most is watching us evolve into new, new finding new ways to use digital media. That's important to me. Um, and then also, it, that's very challenging at the same time because as technology has improved and things have changed over the years, um, when you think about marketing and public relations, years ago, things were very uh, linear, if you will, and there wasn't so many forms of media. So right. now we have all these new ways that we can market to people or that we can speak to people to tell our story, um, to build our brand. But it becomes increasingly more challenging to manage all of those different channels. Right. So PR is very clearly a very powerful tool. Is there any way like PR could just totally backfire on a company? Absolutely. And that's a really good question. Um, and you know what you get into in those situations a lot of time, that's a, a crisis management situation or poor execution by a PR, or someone who's handling PR or PR team. And most importantly, to me, I, I don't want to forget to mention this, is PR should drop trust. If you all did a quick Google search and you searched for the biggest PR nightmares in the past five years, I would just encourage you to take a deep dive into those. And generally, the biggest PR nightmares come when there's um, trust is broken between mm -hmm. the community and an organization or between the individual and an organization. So I think the best PR, you know, it's going to drive trust. It's going to be timely. It's going to be consistent across various channel channels. It's going to be relatable. It's also going to support the organization's goals and missions. It will align with the brand accurately and promote the brand's images and values. And, you know, those PR messages, they should be proactive when they're when possible, getting back to it being well thought out and tactful. Thank you so much for calling and talking to us about this today. That was fascinating. Yes, and thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. And if you need anything else, please let me know. I hope you all have a great day and good luck. All right, so that was Jennifer oh. Fries. <laughs> She's We're back, and now we have ice cream. Yes, ice cream oh, it's right here. Love your ice cream. We have ice cream in mugs. Yes. And Diane is going to tell us a little bit about how uh, the ice cream industry can be helped by PR. Today. As explained by the wonderful Jennifer Fries, PR is very important for businesses, and especially the ice cream business. Um, MarketingQuotes.com talks about how the ice cream industry is incredibly competitive, and social media and the use of marketing is a must for that such a for such a competitive space. They also explain that when choosing a PR agency, ice cream companies need to choose an agency that has experience with the ice cream industry. You don't want to like, be like choosing an actor who has no singing ability and putting him in a musical. There, it's not not the move. Yeah, don't, don't Russell Crow it. I was just about to say that. <laughs> Basically, PR is very important for any company as it kind of like makes your brand. As an ice cream brand, you want to have an idea of what you are. You want it to appeal to all ages, all yeah. demographics. And yes, while ice cream isn't the most healthiest, it is great for meeting up, it's great for warm days, it's good for cold days if you're making little vlogs. Mm -hmm. So you want a PR agency who will be able to represent you best and also not make it look like you're just selling you're just selling more ice cream because there's lots of ice cream companies out there and there's lots of ice cream shops out there. Yeah, there are lots of angles you can take with selling ice cream. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have, I guess, a PR department yeah. that understands... Or at least a person who knows what they're doing. Yeah, understands how to make it appeal to all demographics. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, I think that's it, actually. Yeah. All right, perfect. All right, that was episode two of Scoop's Blog, complete with PR, how PR can be used with the ice cream industry and ice cream. Next week, we're going to be talking about advertising. So, uh, join us then. Bye, Scoopers. Two of the Scoop vlog. Welcome to my suite. This is, uh, where I live. Um, this is uncomfortable. Let's start again. <laughs> I'm going for the trashy, relatable vibe so that viewers like you feel that you have an advocate. And I say the same with this flannel. It's my favorite. Oh, Just the flat ability. Grungy vibes. vibes? Yes. I'll be grungy. I can't, sing it. Nirvana. <laughs> I can't be grungy, what am I saying? <laughs> that was so chaotic. It is so chaotic. But There's it's a okay. reason why. <laughs> it's why I'm the relatable one. See? Come to my room.
you get relatable content. Yeah.